in the previous video we did the third order case in this video I'm going to show how to use the orthogonalization process to find solution for the fourth order case so these are the expansions and um, after calculating out all these expansions you have to simplify them using the orthogonality uh, relationships between the vectors just let me go back um, actually no yeah over here so with the choice of vectors for w x y and z we have when they are orthogonal in and give a zero product and when they are not so when you apply the orthogonality relationships you will get a simplification so basically the sum of w is not zero it is four because the entries of w are one the sum of z is zero likewise for y and likewise for x that's why u11 only has just one term after simplification so before simplification we have this for u11 after simplification we get this for u11 likewise we apply the orthogonality rules and simplify for u22 and for u33 and for u44 basically and then we can try to do a change of variables like we did in the third order case we define a, another um, set of variables in d using x y and z and excluding w And then we go and calculate the products for the en entries of D. So as you can see, with the absence of W, the number of terms are fewer, <laughs> which is nicer. But still, we can do some more simplifications by applying the same orthogonality rules we use previously so when we do so we get the simplified version for the change of variables which will be this so when we start substituting back into the original problem you notice that r1 is already defined and we can use it to define d22 and 
I'm, I'm not including D11 here because it's already shown to be zero by definition. Yeah. Because X sums to zero, Y sums to zero, and Z sums to zero. So, so here we can find D22 and we can proceed to find D33 and likewise we can go to get D44. Now, after getting the values for DKK, we can go to the change of variables system and start looking for R3, for R2, for R4. So, um, before we go there, let me make a comment. Note that since we had those complex sinusoids in the vectors, when you raise them to an appropriate power or when you take uh, a any of the special products in which the entries uh, come up to one, for example, you have uh, y squared will have entries of one by definition of y. So you see y squared is basically going to have entries of one. Likewise, um, when you multiply x and z, you, you get entries of one and so on. So when you sum those vectors, each one of them will sum to either 0 or to 4, depending on whether the entries multiplied up to 1 or not. So, so that's how the 4 appears here, basically. That is, also this will be replaced with 4 here, because the sum of 1, 4 times is 4, and so on. So when we start doing substitutions, we get this inside D44 expression and we continue substituting and we get this expression with which we can find R3. It's actually a cubic equation. So you just do a cubic problem for R3 here. Then we notice that if R3 is known, we now have a quadratic problem for R2 and for R4. So we proceed to analyze that and do the calculations. Once R2 and R4 are found, we are done. We'll have the coefficients that are necessary to describe the roots for the fourth order system. So basically this system will be solved and we will have the roots for it basically. So that's it for the fourth order system.